just want to speak on the subject of honor. Tell your neighbor and say honor. Honor. Tell your neighbor and shout honor. Honor. This whole week we have been studying on honor. Some of you that followed online, there were teachings on honor by various men of God. And uh, I'm going to also take it further. And I know you shall be blessed. Touch your neighbor and say honor. Honor. Now, when we say honor, what do we mean when we say honor someone? To honor literally means to think well of a person. When we say you honor someone, it simply means you think well of the person. You help, you are helping someone. It also means you hold the person in high regard or in high esteem. When we say you are honoring someone, I, like the Sunday school young boy said, pick, take your iPads, your gadgets, or your pens and notes and take, and take some notes, okay? So when we say you are honoring someone, and number one, it means to think well of a person. It's on the screens. Uh, can you project the slides on the screens, please? When we say you are honoring someone, it means you are you think well of the person. Number one, number two, it means you help or you give support to the person. Number three, it means you are praising someone. When you honor someone, you praise the person. You think well of the person. You hold the person in high regard. When we say you are honoring someone, you have a sense of awe and admiration for the person. You admire the person in a unique and an extraordinary way. So when we say you are honoring someone, that is what it means. But I always say, um, when your father calls you, you respond because you have honor and respect for the person. When your boss calls you, you respond because you honor your boss. Anytime you give respect or admiration or anybody you hold in high esteem, it is a sign that you honor the person. Tell you anybody and say, honor me. Honor me. No, no, no. Look at them as if they are disrespecting you and say, honor me, honor me. Honor me. Are you getting me? Tell them, say, honor me. Honor In me. fact, if they are older than you, say it loud. I say, I'm older than you. Honor me. <laughs> yes. So when you, when you honor someone, it means you respect them, you value them, you admire them, you support them, and you hold them in high esteem. And how do you honor? Number one, you honor. Who are the people that requires honor? Before I even come to how do you honor? The first um, 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 person that requires honor is God. Tell your neighbor and say, honor God. Honor God. In other words, respect God. Hold God in high esteem. God is not your mate. He's a man or a person that deserves our honor. Tell your neighbor and say, honor God. Honor God. Yes, God requires the highest level of honor in our lives. The person that requires the highest level of honor is God, Jehovah God. He requires the highest level of honor. And we honor God with our words. Tell your neighbor our words. Our words. Number two, our life. Our light. Our lives. Our actions. Our actions. Our tithes. Our tithes. And our offerings. And our offerings. So if you want to honor God, you honor God with your words. When you come to church and you say, Father, we thank you. Father, we adore you. We give you praise. It's a sign of what? Honor. honor. You are expressing your honor to the Lord. 
by giving him thanks, by offering him your, your thanksgiving, your appreciation through your words. You honor God also with your life. Your life must be a symbol of honor unto him. You honor God with your actions. Tell your neighbor and say your actions. Your actions. Yes, you honor God also with your tithes. You honor God with your offerings. The Bible says, I mean, either um, 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 come to his house and honor him with your tithes and offerings and he, Jehovah God, will open the windows of heavens unto you. God deserves our utmost honor. Tell your neighbor and say, honor God. Honor God. Now let's go to Revelation chapter 5. Um, um, let's, first, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 20. Then we come to Revelation 5, um, 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 11. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 20. Shall we read from the screen one go? Yes, now let's go to Revelation 5 um, verses 11. Can we give me New King James, please? Thank you. Shall we read one go? Let's, go, let's take it back again, verse 11. Now the Bible says, shall we all read one go? Then I looked and I heard. Who was speaking here? John. God gave John a revelation as to what goes on in heaven. And the Bible says all the innumerable angels in heaven, this were what they were doing. And I heard many angels around the throne. Who was sitting on the throne? The Lord the living creatures and the elders and the number of them was ten thousands times ten thousands and thousands of thousands. In other words, the number of people that were giving honor to God could not be counted. That is why I say ten thousand times ten thousands. When you put it in an amplified, it says innumerable angels. Now let's take me back to amplified and then we come back to, shall we read one go? Mm -hmm. And the voice of the many angels and the elders and the living on earth saying, Yes, thousands and thousands, what? Innumerable. Uh -huh. And what were they saying? Wealthy and deserving is the lamb that was sacrificed to receive power and riches and wisdom and mighty and honor. Our God deserves what? Honor. He deserves what? Honor. Now let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 20 verses 30. Not 1 Samuel 20, 20. 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 2 verses 30. 1 Samuel 2 30. Shall we read? One go. Therefore, the Lord of Israel declares, I indeed say, that your house, that is the house of Aaron, your father would walk in priestly service before me. Uh huh. Those who despise me, I will be insignificant and honor attracts honor. Tell your neighbor, honor attracts honor. Honor attracts honor. When you honor someone, God gives you honor. 
And he, here, when he says, when you honor God, he also honors you. When you despise him, he also despises you. When you honor your parents, the Bible says he even gives you long life. I'm going to come to that pretty soon. Anytime you honor God, honor comes back to you. Anytime you honor someone, honor comes back to you. You see, there's scripture that says, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall God cause men to pour to your bosom. He didn't even say money. There is no money written there. Anything you give shall come back to you. Amen. When you give honor, honor will come back to you. When you give your time to God, God will give you time. That's why I always say, hardly will you see a me pastor admitted in the hospital for six mm. months, three months, waiting before they die. But some of you in your families, you can see some of your uncles, your relatives, they can be in the hospital for three months, two months, and they are still in the hospital. And somehow they end up passing on. But hardly, I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but hardly will you see any pastor admitted in the hospital since you were young. All the pastors, you know, every Sunday you see them in church, isn't it? Yes. Sir. Why? Because, because they honor God with their time. God also gives them life. God also preserves them just for his sake. So honor is a force that when you release, it comes back to you. Mm. So when you honor God, he honors you. When you dishonor him, he says he treats you as insignificant. Can you imagine? No, it's, it's there. He says, and those who despise me will be what? Insignificant. When you dishonor God, God treats you as an entity. But when you honor him, he also honors you. The second person, the second people that God requires us to honor. So the first person that deserves honor is who? God. Yes. And you honor God in your words, in your actions, Time. with your life, your tithes and your offerings. Number two, I'm just trying to run through it because there's too much to give today. Number two, you honor your parents. You honor your parents. Yes, you honor your parents. Somebody say, what if my parents are abusive? That is not I mean, important right now. What is important is that scripture demands that we honor our parents. Even if they are not the kind, the best parents to you, or they never took care of you, or all this, those things that some of you say, God, what God requires of you is to honor your parents. And how do you honor your parents? You honor them with your actions. You honor them with your words. You honor them with your and you honor them with your yes. There are some people if your mother calls you for 2K there's a lecture you give your mother. Why do you think money is is what? It's collected in the streets. And she, they, they, she's only asking for 2000 Are we here? See, you, sh you should be grateful that you have a father and you have a mother. Some people don't have. Some people wish that their parents were alive. You, you have. They are just asking for 2000 and it's all, it's become a whole lecture. Tell anybody and say, honor your parents. Honor your parents. Say, honor your father and mother. Honor your father and your Now let's mother. go to Ephesians chapter 6. I'm reading from Ephesians 6. And we can actually start from verse 1 to 3. Let's start from verse 1. Read 1, go. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. That is acceptable. Let, let's take it again. 1, go. Yes. He said, children, obey your parents in the Lord. That is, accept their guidance and their discipline as God's representatives. Even though this scripture actually talks about parents in the Lord or spiritual parents, it can also refer to biological parents. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Yeah, God says you are supposed to honor your father and mother. Now we go to verse 2. Now, uh-huh. Honor. Shall we read one go? Honor. Esteem. Value as precious, your father and your mother, 
and be respectful to them. This is the first commandment with a, a promise. The first commandment with a promise is children honor your father and mother. He says this is the first commandment with a promise. And what is the promise? Next verse. So that it may be well with you. Can you put the two scriptures together? He says when you honor your father and mother it shall be well with you. In other words, maybe it is not being well with you because you have refused to honor your father and your mother. Are we here? Yes. See, this is in black and white. The word of God. He says, when you honor your father and mother, what will happen to you? It shall be well with you on this earth. Hello? Hello? Are we here? Yes, sir. Yes. There are some people, they literally honor their spiritual father and mother than their biological father and mother. That is not right. Tell your neighbor it's not right. It is not. If you right. honor your pastor more than your own biological father it's wrong. Because you see, when your father and your mother were taking care of you at the time they gave birth to you, that spiritual father was nowhere to be found. Are you getting me? Yes. Sir. He was not there. But now because he prays for you or speaks into your life or whatever it is you really regard your pastor or you honor your pastor more than your biological father or your biological mother it is an error the bible says if you want it to be well with you honor your father and mother that is the first commandment with a promise if you can bow down to your spiritual father you better bow down properly to your biological father if you can bow down to your spiritual mother you better bow down properly to your biological mother yes, that sir. is what God requires of us first but you see there is so much hypocrisy in the church that we pretend to be um, in church you want to look like you are the perfect person, an angel, but outside there you want to look like you are something else. Ladies and gentlemen, it is best we give the utmost honor. The second people God requires us to honor are the people that took care of us when we were young. Yes, sir. Even if your father didn't take care of you, can I tell you something? At yes, least he, he gave you um, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. You cannot deny the fact that his DNA is part of your system. Yeah, you can't. It doesn't matter how hard or how far you go. You can't deny the fact that. So the scripture requires us to honor our father and our mother. Yes. And he says, if you do that, what will happen? It shall be well with you. Let's read two and three together. Two and three together. I like it so that you read the two and three together. Ephesians um, 6, 2 and 3. Ephesians 6, 2 and 3. Shall we? Honor, esteem, value, precious. Your father and your mother. Mm -hmm. And be respectful to them. This is the first commandment with a promise. Verse 3. So that it may be well with you. Yes, the Bible says, so that it may be well with you. Sometimes your father may be alcoholic, but just tell him to pray for you. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. He may not be praying in tongues like you do. He may not be so spiritual like you. But can I tell you something? Yes. That fatherly blessing you need in order to excel. Are we together? Yes, sir. Yeah, you may be too spiritual than him, but ladies and gentlemen, his blessing is needed to help you excel. If scripture is true and the word of God is to obey, is to be obeyed, then you need to honor him regardless of who or what you think he is. Tell your neighbor, honor him. Honor him. So that what will happen, it may be well with you. The next people that God requires us to honor. And he said we should honor them first with our actions, our words, our money, and our... Yes. Number three. Third people God requires us to honor is the elderly. Tell your neighbor, say, honor the elderly. 
Honor the elderly. Honor the elderly, the people that are older than you. God requires you to honor them. Give them your utmost honor. See, we are living in a day in this generation, generation G, people don't really honor the elderly. See, you sit in a bus and uh, and children are seated down and you tell them to get up so that the older person sit down. You say, why? Are they better human beings than me? That's what he said. But the word of God requires us to honor the elderly, the people that are older than us. Now I want us to give me, give me Leviticus chapter 19 verses 32. Give me New King James, not until I tell you to get it to, into a different um, version. Just follow. Let's all scriptures be given in New King James. Leviticus chapter 19 verses 32. Shall we read? One go. You shall rise before who? And honor the presence of who? And fear for I am the Bible says you should honor the presence of an old person. Anybody that is older than you, the person demands your honor, the person demands your respect, they demands that you give him the utmost honor. So you honor God, you honor your parents, you honor who? The elderly, the people that are older than you. God requires you to honor them. See, the moment you mishandle an elderly person, you are literally reducing your lifespan. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. When you mishandle an elderly person, you are reducing your lifespan. The Bible says, honor your father in the Lord so that you may live long on the earth. See, when you take the original scripture um, um, about honoring your father in the Lord, um, honoring your father and mother, the Bible says you live long on this earth that you may live long, that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. In the same way, when you honor an elderly, it is like honoring a father. It attracts long life. Some people can look at older people and literally abuse them. Look at that uncle, his head like a goat. You can imagine. I mean, look, you, you are abusing your uncle. Your uncle. And sometimes when you were young, they took care of you. They supported you in one way or the other. Ladies and gentlemen, every elderly person around you, both in your family and outside of your family, God requires you to honor them. Amen? Amen. Yes. So now let's get to the next scripture. First Peter 5. Shall we read one go? No, 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 no. Let's read it again. One go. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, likewise, you young people submit yourselves to your, to your, elders, to your what? Elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility for God resists the proud. You may be richer than the elderly in your family, but learn how to honor them. You may be more exposed to the elderly in your family, but learn how to honor them. You may be more influential to the elderly in your family, but learn how to honor them. Are we together? Yes. Sir. It doesn't matter what you think you have or you are. God requires you to honor every person that is older than you. Are you listening to me? Yes. Yes. You should. God requires you to honor anyone as long as they are older than you. God requires you to honor them. They may not be up to your 
your standards in terms of class and in the society but God requires you to honor them next people that God requires us to honor number four is your boss tell your neighbor and say honor your boss honor your boss all these things are scriptural God requires you to honor your boss now let's go to first Timothy chapter 6 one from the passion translation see let me tell you one thing ladies and gentlemen if you are always dishonoring people you reap dishonor honor is a seed you sow and it comes to you when you dishonor the people that are ahead of you you get what you get what dishonor when you honor the people that have gone ahead of you you reap what honor now shall we read um first timothy 6 1 read one go now hold on let, let, let me let me say this you see the book of timothy was written by apostle paul timothy was a young pastor he was like almost like a teenager and he was pastoring a church are you listening to me yes sir. so pa timothy was a young pastor a young man pastoring so paul wrote this book of timothy to him to guide him on how the people in the church are supposed to conduct themselves so when he wrote this thing in this document he wrote it to a pastor so he was telling timothy now instruct every employee in the church are you following yes sir. so that's why it starts like that one go Say, tell them never to provide them with a reason to discredit what God's name because of their actions. I am I know many big Christian CEOs who just don't like to employ Christians, they don't want to employ Christians. Why? Because of the attitude and their behavior. Because as a believer, you are expected to do better. You are expected to conduct yourself better. You are expected to behave well. But they are the ones that cause the greatest harm to their bosses. Are we together? Yes, sir. Yeah. And I always say, I mean, it's not marriage. Business is not marriage. When you are employing someone, employ them based on scale, not based on their religion. Hello? Hello. Oh, you can quote me anyway. I said when you are employing someone, employ them based on their scale and expertise, not based on their religion. Reason being, I mean, what is the essence of employing someone who is very spiritual, but not skillful in the work they do? They don't know the job. They are incompetent on the, on the, on the job. Are we together? Yes. Sir. If you were are faced with the option of choosing a believer and a non-believer both of them having scale the same scale then you go for the believer are we together yes sir. but you don't prioritize expertise and skill over spirituality when it comes to work and the corporate and and and, and your business because if you do that you may be destroying that which god has already given you are we together yes sir. yeah so as believers we need to learn how to honor our bosses your employers if the person employed you he determines your paycheck he can choose to fire you and you will be jobless yes you may be able to get a job but not the same and the scripture demands that we honor our boss. let's read it again one go say instruct every employee to respect and honor their employers for this attitude presents to them a clear testimony of god's truth and your yes so god requires you see some of you if you are you are employers you are reaping what you sowed when you were an employee you used to gossip about your boss so people are also gossiping about you hallelujah glory be to god are you getting me yes sir yes so like i said honor is a seed when you reap it you what yes. when you sow it you what you reap so when you honor your boss one day god will create people to honor you 
Amen. Amen. When you also become a boss, when you dishonor him or her, one day God will make sure people also what? Dishonest you. Yes. Number five, people you are supposed to honor, those in authority and political leaders. God requires us to honor people in authority. Bible says, honor, give honor to those who honor is the you. Some, the way some people abuse leaders in this country. Hey, hey, he's a thief. Hey, he's what? When he stole, were you there? This one, he's a thief. He's an arm robber. He's what? When did he rob you? All these guys, they are thieves. At what point did they steal from you? Scripture requires us to honor people in authority. Tell your neighbor, honor those in authority. Honor those in authority. Shall it say, honor those in authority? Honor those who are in authority. Romans chapter 13, verse 7. Romans chapter 13, verse 7. Read. One go. Who are the people that collect taxes? Who are the people that collect taxes? The government. The Bible says, pay them what you owe them. Tell your neighbor, pay them, pay them what you owe them. Some of you owe, you owe so much. You owe, you owe the government a lot of taxes. When you, when you face it, they, say, they call it ta tax what? Evasion. There's the difference between tax avoidance and tax evasion. That's for another day. Amen? Yeah. So if you evade tax, it's an error. They have the right to arrest you. Amen? Amen. Yes. And let's verse, verse 8. It doesn't end there. Say, pay them what pay them what you owe them. Huh? Be under obligation to one. Under obligation you have. Yes. Scripture says God requires us to honor people who have gone ahead of us, honor leaders who have gone ahead of us, and honor those that God placed in positions ahead of us. When you do that, Scripture says it shall be well with you. Now, give me this scripture, Romans 13 7 in uh, NIV. Romans chapter 13, verse 7 in uh, NIV. Yes. Shall we read one go? Hey, 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 hey. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Read that part louder. Those of you that owe me, please read it, shout it, shout it. Read one go, read one go. Read, read. He said, give what? Everyone what you read it louder please read it somebody somebody's not hearing it. Re read it louder one go shout it give everyone what you owe him hey after service i'll send this scripture to some people say give everyone what you owe him uh -huh. if you owe taxes, pay taxes if revenue, revenue. in respect, then respect if honor then honor yes Oh, what a good scripture. What a good scripture. <laughs> oh my God. I have missed this scripture in the longest. Please, somebody take a picture for me. I have to send it just like this, as it is. On the screen, on the big screen, so that I send it to my, some, of the, some of the people here. Please look at me. I mean, you are the one I'm talking to. <laughs> He says, let no debt remain what? Except Are you hearing that? Yes. Now the next people, let me quickly run through it. That God requires us to honor. Number six is our parents in the Lord. Or spiritual father or spiritual mother. 
the people that God requires you to honor is our parents in the Lord or the, first, the same scripture that we read in uh, Ephesians 6 1 shall we go back to it 1 go Ephesians 6 1 2 3 1 go uh -huh. you no, know, no. shall we read 1 go children mm -hmm. obey your parents in the Lord uh huh uh huh then it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. The reason why young people die premature these days is because of dishonor. See, when the young boy, the Sunday school boy was preaching, what's the name? Kenny. Kelly. When that young boy was preaching um, a few minutes ago, he was saying that honor adds to your life and dishonor what? reduces your life, subtracts from your life. When you honor people that you deserve honor, you gain long life and it is written there. It says honor your father in the Lord so that it may be well with you and you may live long on the earth. If you want to enjoy long life, gym is good, but there is a better gym than um, 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 than what you go to. The better gym, the best gym to do is to learn how to what? Honor the elderly and honor people who are ahead of you honor your father and mother honor your parents in the Lord and give me Hebrews chapter 13 verses 17 from the New Living Translation NLT Hebrews 13 17 one go shall we read one go mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. says obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say their work is to watch over your and they are accountable to not to you no spiritual leader is accountable to you their accountability is to God. They report to God. They don't report to you. The Bible says, who is he that judges another man's servant? He, they are called God's servants. So it is God that has the prerogative and the right to judge them, to instruct them. If you are, they are not accountable to you. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. The Bible says, obey your spiritual leaders and do what they say. Their work is to watch over your souls and they are accountable to Jehovah God. Give them reason to do their work joyfully, not with sorrow. Because when they do the work with sorrow, it says it will not be good for your benefit. It attracts unnecessary cases that you don't need. I always say you have too many problems. You have too many personal problems. The last problem you need is the problem that comes upon you because you dishonored a spiritual authority. Now let's go to the next scripture. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Shall we read one go? Shall we read one go? Mm -hmm. Again, read it loud. I want go. The Bible says, make sure you show deep appreciation for those who cherish you and diligently work as, work as, work as, yes, not just pastors. Anybody in this ministry that has been given a leadership role deserves your honor. Are we together? You cannot say, oh, me, I, I honor I honor the man of God. I honor um, Papa, but these other ones, I don't honor them. That means you don't honor anybody. 
If you say you honor me, you cannot honor the other pastors. That means you literally dishonor me. Are we together? Yes, sir. Yeah, so the same level of honor you give to me, you must accord the same level of honor to every other minister that serves in this house. Are we together? Yes, sir. Are we together? Yes, doctor. Oh, you, these other ones, these ones, me, I don't honor them. Yes, I understand. They used to be your friends, but you see, you need to learn how to separate friendship outside there and when you come into the house of God. Are we together? Yes. Please. Yes, you must. The Bible says we must give every minister the honor that is due them. You must learn how to honor the minister, even your departmental head. Mm. Look at that guy. I don't even respect him. And you are talking to your departmental head of a church. Can I tell you something? Yes, sir. Even if you don't like someone, honor them. There's a difference between liking someone and honoring someone. You may not like them, but learn how to honor, honor them. them. Are we together? Yes, sir. Yeah, because you see, like I said um, last week, God says we should love everybody. God did not say we should befriend everybody. As to who you choose as your friend, it is your personal decision. But loving them, you are required by God to love. But as to who becomes your friend, that is a different um, 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 ball game. You need to love people but decide as to who you bring closer to yourself in the same way learn how to honor people even if you you don't like them give them the respect they deserve amen amen so now we're going to narrow down to because today is a special day and uh, we I want to teach you how to honor spiritual authority how to honor spiritual authority because today is a day um, um we are um we are um, celebrating a special day for myself so you need to be taught on how to honor spiritual authority i i thought of i'm um, bringing in a guest preacher but i told myself it is better you are taught by me how to honor spiritual authority because if i if i bring someone the person may not do justice to exactly what needs to be done are you getting me yes so it's better that way now now the a few things you need to write down before we go on everything i was saying was introduction i'll finish in the next 20 minutes um, but in this 20 minutes i want you to be very attentive amen amen now the bible say um, the bible makes us understand that we should obey our parents in the lord and that is in the hebrews chapter 13 verses 17 are we getting me yes sir. now when you come to the house of god the house of god can be likened to your own house there is order in your house and there is order in the church there are certain things you cannot do in your house you don't expect them to repeat in this house are we together yes sir. the other day the bible talks about david and the bible said david knew how to conduct himself in the palace you must have the wisdom to know how to conduct yourself when you come here that is why we talked about kingdom behavior Amen. Amen. If you have forgotten that sermon, go to YouTube and just type it and then you just get to know how to conduct yourself in the house of God. And when you come into any ministry, not just this one, any service, any ministry, you must learn how to connect to the anointing that is operating in the ministry for your life to change. We are here to be transformed. We are here to be edified. We are here to grow. We are here to be changed and to be prepared for heaven. But ladies and gentlemen, if you don't learn the act of connecting to an anointing, your presence here will be not of, um, will be no, will be of no use. Yes. Are we together? Yes. Sir. So I'll write these things down. Number one, the anointing you respect will benefit you. The anointing you respect will benefit you. The anointing you respect will benefit you. Number two, the anointing you honor will bless you. When you honor an anointing, that anointing will bless you. Number three, the anointing you believe in will work miracles for you. For an anointing to effect a miracle in your life, you must have faith in that anointing. For an anointing to work for you, you must believe in that anointing. 
the, last, the other day the lady was giving a testimony of how they came here with uh, a child that was dumb a child that was dumb their belief was that when they bring the child to the altar and they speak and make a prayer from this altar something will happen and what happened the dumb child started speaking right after they prayed are you getting me yes. yeah and i was not here to pray for them are you following me yes i didn't lay hands on the child but their faith in the anointing that is at this altar began to work for them mm. amen amen yes so our sister Faber had a court case and she says the judge was about to rule the court case against them and the family but she felt like once she comes to the altar and prays something will happen and she said she came to the altar there was no I was not here I didn't need to pray for anybody just by connecting to the anointing that operates from this house the judge overturned the case within a matter of minutes so ladies and gentlemen for an anointing to work for you you must have faith in that anointing mm. i'm going to I'm, I'm expound on that later next number four the anointing you desire you attract for you to attract any anointing you must first desire it apostle paul said earnestly desire spiritual gifts anybody that desire prophecy the, the, the gift of prophecy you prophesy amen see some of you couldn't say amen because you look at yourself and prophecy you can see yourself and prophecy is so far 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 I will see you. the first time I saw um, a person preach when I was on campus as a student I was passing by our hall of residence and a guy was holding the microphone and he was preaching and i'm like i was just passing by I, because see the hall the, 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 they were in a hall and the service was going on and i'm like who is this guy i walked into the service and stood at the back just watch him like i was watching a movie and i saw a man with charisma preaching and right after the service i went to him and said sir please can you teach me how to preach like you and that is how i learned how to preach mm. are you getting me yes sir he was my age mate i think a year older than me but guess what i had to serve him we were all on the same campus he was a pharmacy student i was an engineering student i'll go and cook for him i'll wash his clothes he will send me around he will take my money everything i was like I was literally like a houseboy to my own age mate on campus. Why? Because I desired something that was upon his life. Are you getting me? Yes. Sir. My parents took me to school to learn engineering. Me, I was serving some boy. Why? Because I felt like what the man carried, I needed. Mm. And guess what? I got it. Amen. When I was in second year, that was in first year. When I was in second year, listen to me. When I was in second year, I started preaching on the campuses as if I was in final year. Actually, people thought I was in final year because of the kind of charisma and the way I was able to expand the word of God. Because the guy taught me the nitty gritties of ministry. And then when he was invited to go preach, he would tell me, I will not tell them I'm not going. A few minutes to the service, I'll tell them I've sent someone else. So he will, he will give me platforms to speak at places where he's supposed to preach. And guess what? A time came that when he's preaching and when I am preaching you can't really determine who is speaking when you are outside of the auditorium if you can't, you, and he's preaching you might think it's me or when I'm preaching you might think it's him why because we, our hearts and our spirits connected so well because of how I drew from him are you getting me? yes sir Yeah. so when you desire an anointing upon a man you are attracted yes next one the anointing you become familiar with can do nothing for you. When we say, when we say you become familiar with an anointing, you understand? Oh, ah, you see, you know the way people say, hi, passy, hi, passy. You see, you, you, you see the man of God like an another ordinary man. That is how you miss it. 
Amen. Amen. The anointing you are skeptical about cannot help you. Is, is he from God or from the devil? Should I tell you where he's from? I shouldn't say it. Good. See, you are skeptical about when you are skeptical about an anointing, it cannot help you. And I put a point there. It says, you may not like a man of God, but you learn how to what? Read what is there. Hmm? No, no, no. Read. You may not like a man of God, but you have to respect and honor his anointing. Liking him is something different. There are some men of God, even me as a pastor, I don't like. Yeah. I'm not supposed to like them, but I honor the anointing. I respect the grace that is upon their lives. Are you getting me? Yes. Yeah. Liking them is different, but honoring them is your obligation. You are obliged by scripture, by heaven, to honor a man that carries authority in the spirit. It is your biblical requirement to honor. So how do you honor? How do you honor? How do you honor a father in the Lord? Number one, place a demand on his anointing. If you want to honor, the greatest place of honor is when you learn how to place a demand on the person's anointing. What do I mean by that? Make notes because a time will come they will call you to come and preach and you preach it as if you are the one that prepared it yourself. See you? See me, when I was reading my Bible, I saw this. But it was a sermon from your pastor. Yes. Learn how to place a demand on the anointing that is upon the man. You see, an anointing can be present. I think this is too wordy, but it's okay. An anointing can be present, but without you placing a demand on the anointing, it cannot benefit you. Did you hear what I said? An anointing can be here. People come here, the dam spoke, cripples are walking, cancer is getting healed. All those testimonies are being shared here in this church. Stage 4 cancer getting healed, strange things are happening. HIV getting cured, but you may have the same condition. But if you don't learn how to place a demand on the anointing, the anointing here will not work for you. Are you getting me? Yes. Sir. Yeah. You see, you can choose to grow your hair. Where's Brian? Where's Brian? No, the other one. Yeah, you see, come, come, see, come. I just want to use you as, a, as, as to illustrate something. Just come, just come. You know, oh, you've cut your hair. Wow, why did you cut? You have... Now, you see his hair. Now he's cut it a bit. You know, the way his dread looks. You can choose to leave it like this. Do you know a baba? You have baba in your area. Where do you live? Kite, Kasarani. There are a lot of babas in Kasarani, but Brian has chosen to leave his hair nicely like this because it carries swag. See you? Good. Now, there are barbers in Kasarani, but he has chosen to leave his hair like that. He chose not to go to the barber. He can choose. When he even goes to the barber, he can choose to don't cut it. Just leave it as it is. You can come to this church, but you may not connect to the anointing. Even though there is an anointing here to help you. If you don't connect to the anointing, the anointing will not help you. Are you getting me? Yes. Yes. So you need to learn how to place a demand on an anointing for an anointing to help you. Now, Luke chapter 8, verses 43 to 46. I think those of you that followed me to um, Rehoboth, I think I preached on this scripture. Luke chapter 8, verses 43 to 45. Shall we all read one go?
Now, the Bible says Jesus was with a multitude and the woman had an issue of blood, a flow of blood for 12 years. And she had tried all physicians, doctors, and could not be healed by any. And the Bible said the woman came from where? Verse 44. The Bible said the woman came from where? She came from where? Can I tell you something? Most of the time, people that are closest to the anointing are the ones that don't get benefit from the anointing. Not all the time, but most of the time. People that are closest to the anointing are the ones that don't get blessed by the anointing. Not all the time. It's up to you to learn how to be close to an anointing and still draw from the anointing. Are we together? Yes, sir. You can be close to an anointing and not draw from the anointing. You can be close to an anointing and still draw from the anointing. I was close to um, 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 the God that taught me to preach and I drew from him. But you can still be close to an anointing and not learn how to draw from the anointing. There were people that were surrounding Jesus. Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied it, the Bible said, Peter and those who were with him said, Master, the multitude do what? Throng and press on you. And you are saying, who touched me? In other words, sir, you are being petty. What you are saying doesn't make sense. Everybody is touching you. So what do you mean by who touched me? Are you getting me? Yes, sir. Now, can, just can I get um, 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 guys, four guys come forward so that we illustrate this that I want to illustrate. Four guys, yes. Thank you. Thank you. So, now surround me. Surround me. Can I get a lady to be the lady with the issue of blood? We know you don't have any issue of blood, but just come. Now, the Bible says a woman had a flow of blood. Shall we put the scripture on the screen and then we, we read it again and then I illustrate it quickly. One go. Shall we read one go? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. She came from where? So there were other people that were around Jesus. So the woman came from far. Uh huh and touch the border of his garments and immediately her flow of blood did what next verse one go uh-huh 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 the multitude throng and press on now let's assume this is the multitude they were pressing on jesus now, there were people around Jesus whose bodies physically touched Jesus. But now, a woman came and touched the border. Hold, hold the border of my jacket. Touched the border of his jacket. And that woman got a miracle. But these guys whose bodies physically touched Jesus, nothing happened to them. Are you following me? The woman that got healing, her body did not touch Jesus. She only touched a border of his garment and she received a miracle. But these ones whose bodies physically were touching Jesus, nothing happened to them. Why? Because these ones, even though they were close to Jesus, they touched Jesus, they did not place a demand on the anointing Jesus carried. They touched him with a physical touch, they did not touch with the revelation. You see, you can be around a man of God and touch him every day. Oh, Pasi. Oh, man of God. Oh, apostle. Oh, Papa. You can be touching every day. But guess what? There is a touch and a touch. The first touch is a physical touch without a demand. But the second touch is a touch with a demand. Now, when you connect to a man of God with a demand, you place a demand on the hand. The anointing leaves him to you. And miracles begin to work in your life. And today we pray over your life. That may miracles begin to work in your life. Just because you connected to the anointing on this altar. If you are here, shout I receive it. Thank you. 
Now, when you read first, Second Kings chapter thirteen, verses twenty-one, the Bible says that when Elisha, the major prophet, died, they buried him in a tomb. And when the, um, the Midianites were going to bury um, the, uh, um, a man that, were, that was dead, they carried the man and threw the dead body on Elisha's bones. And the Bible says that the dead body came back to life. Now, think about it: a man that is dead. There, is, there was still anointing resident on his dead bones to an extent that when a dead body touched his dead bones the dead body came back to life that should tell you or give you a better perspective that when a man that carries an anointing releases hands on you there is a shift that happens in the yes. spirit are you hearing me yes sir so you need to understand if you want to receive from an anointing or if you want to honor an anointing learn how to place a demand on the anointing number two if you want to honor an anointing have a better perspective of the anointing have the right perception of the anointing somebody say perception perception can i tell you something perception is the latest reality what do I mean by that? Perception is the new reality. Um, um, last time, one of my sons in the UK stood by a Rolls Royce in where our church is in the UK, Tottenham Hospital. You know, Tottenham Hospital Stadium is right by our church. Stadium is here. The church we are we are actually opposite the church. So the church is here, stadium is here, and our church is here. So you see, when the footballers come to play, they park their Rolls Royce sometimes on our church compound mm -hmm. and around the church. So one of my sons stood by one of the footballers, Rose Royce, and took a picture and posted it on Facebook and said, the Lord is blessing me. Now, the Rolls Royce is not for him. He lays on the Rolls Royce, takes a picture and said, the Lord is blessing me. So 80% of the people that saw the picture perceived and assumed that the Rolls Royce is his, but it's for a footballer. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. See, the way people perceive you is everything. You see, your reception of an anointing determines your perception. No, your reception of an anointing is determined by your perception of that anointing. Let me take it again. The way you perceive an anointing determines the way you receive from that anointing. Your perception of an anointing will determine the way you receive from that anointing. If ben, Pastor Benny he should come to this church right now, what will you expect? Healing. What will you expect? Healing. healing. Why? Because he's a healing minister. Amen? Amen. Yes, if I invite Nathaniel Bassi to come here, what will you expect? Worship. worship. Why? Because he's a worship minister. When I stand here, what do you expect? Yeah, because I operate in the prophetic. The way you perceive an anointing will determine the way you receive from that anointing. When Jesus checked in into Nazareth in his days, the Bible says that the people of Nazareth saw him as a carpenter. They did not even see him as a miracle worker. They didn't. Why? Because they knew Jesus. Jesus grew up in Nazareth. So they didn't see Jesus as a as any special person. They saw him just as an ordinary man. Now let's read one go. Mark chapter 6, verses 1 to 5. Shall we read one go? His where? So Jesus' his hometown is where? Uh huh. The next Sabbath. Why? Because the Bible says many of the people that knew Jesus were astonished. They asked, where did he get all these powers from to heal the sick and to, to do perform all these miracles? One of the things that most of the time we get caught up in is the past. Ladies and gentlemen, don't judge someone by their past because even within a matter of a week, God can change them. 
Oh, did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. Don't judge anybody by the way you used to know them last year, mm. the way you used to know them last month, the way you used to know them even two days ago because you don't have the slightest idea within the past 24 hours what God would have done in them. Mm. Are we together? Yes. So the people in, 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 in Nazareth got so confused. We know this guy. He grew up here. All we know him as, as a carpenter. Where did he get power to heal um, the sick and perform such miracles? Mm. Are you here? Yes. Uh -huh. Next verse. He's just... Can you imagine that? They are, he's, he's just a carpenter. So when, when sometimes when people see you work miracle, they say, ah, this one, he's just an engineer. This one, he's just what? You see, don't perceive someone from the old way you used to know them. They said he's just a carpenter. And what do you receive from carpenters? Not miracles, furniture, tables and chairs. Are you getting me? Yes. Sir. Shall we read one go? Verse 3. Mm hmm? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they were deeply offended because they know his genesis they know he's growing up they know everything about him the Bible said they were deeply offended and refused to believe in him did he work miracles Yes. did he heal the sick Yes. did he raise the dead Yes. but in Nazareth his anointing could not operate why because they refused to believe in him now skip to verse 5 for me verse 5 for the sake of time shall we read one go now hold on there the bible says because of their unbelief he couldn't there's a difference between he didn't do and he couldn't do. He didn't do means he had the opportunity to do it but chose not to. But he couldn't do means the anointing could not work. Why? Because of the fact that they did not believe in him. So when you, cho when you choose not to believe in an anointing, the anointing would not work for you. Not because the person is not anointed. Because of your own unbelief. And your dishonor. Miracles are happening. The same Jesus that raised the dead. Could you raise the dead in Nazareth? Because of dishonor. And unbelief. Are you getting me? Yes sir. So if you want to connect to an anointing. Learn and make sure you have a better perception of the anointed. Believe in the prophetic grace of that, anoint, of that anointed man. Believe in the power that they carry to heal the sick. Believe in the grace that is upon their life to work miracles in your life. When you believe in the voice that God has given you and the man that God has set over you, I'm telling you the anointing on their lives will begin to work for you. Mm. Lastly, let me just give you this last point. One of the things that fight the anointing is familiarity. Tell you anybody say familiarity. Familiarity. Say never be too familiar with the anointing. Never be too familiar. In fact, say never be familiar with the anointing. Never be familiar with the anointing. Yeah, because familiarity is when you feel like you know someone too well in such a way that you lose the sense of admiration, respect, or value for that person when you become familiar with someone you know them too well so you lose the sense of admiration respect and value you have for the person in other words when you become familiar see familiarity when causes us not to realize the greatness and the anointing that is upon a person how powerful the person is when you become too familiar you don't you don't really see how great that that person that God has given you is. I would say familiarity is the greatest enemy to the anointing. When you become too familiar and personally I have a culture 
when I realize that somebody has become familiar with my anointing, I withdraw from them. Why? Because I don't want my anointing to stop from working for you. Do you hear me? It is yes. to save you. Because see, when somebody becomes too familiar with you as an anointed man, you draw back so that the anointing in your life can still work for them. Because when someone becomes too familiar with you, the anointing in your life refuses to work for them. And you see, this is what it is. When you become familiar with an anointed man, you don't stop the anointing on his life from working. You stop yourself from receiving from the anointing that he carries. Let me take it again. When you become familiar with an anointed man, you don't stop the anointing on his life from working. You stop yourself from receiving from the anointing on his life because of your familiarity. Are we together? Yes, sir. So you need to learn how not to become familiar with an anointing. The moment you become familiar with an anointing, there is a block. And the people that usually become familiar with the anointing are the people that are close to the anointing. And I always say that when you get too close to an anointing, that is when you realize that builders of ark like Noah can still be men. It's a message. Go and think about it. Let me repeat it again. When you become too familiar, when you become close to an anointing, that is when you realize that builders of ark like Noah can still be men. Now, hear me and hear me well, ladies and gentlemen. The enemy has a way of making you get familiar without you realizing. And the plan of the devil when he does that is to make sure you stop receiving from the anointing or the anointing stops making impact in your life so that he can destroy you and I want to take a large scripture and then we can close now can I get two bottles two, two empty bottles quickly two empty bottles just if you can empty the bottle and then two empty bottles. Just, you have an empty bottle? Yes, there's an empty bottle here. Thank you. Just, yes. So, Pasi, stand, stand here with your empty bottle. Can I, get, get me that. Somebody, get another empty bottle. Come with the other empty. Can I get a water? Uh, yes, I, have, I think my water is here. Now, stand here and stand there. Raise it up. Raise your bottle up. Now, let's close this bottle and open your bottle. These are this is what is what empty. I like to illustrate my sermon so that at least if you forget the message, you remember the illustration. Now, this is also what now in the house of God, there are two types of people in the church. They are the one, all these people that came, let's assume this one came to church, that one came to church. This one, this one says, Man of God, I have opened up myself. I am ready for you to pour into me, to bless me, to transform me. Now, these ones, the ones that close themselves up, you see, this one is closed. These ones are the ones that know the man of God. They know him too well. They were classmates in school. They used to smoke weed together in the past. They used to do all the bad things together. So when they come, later on when God changes the man transforms the man and God starts using the man because they know the man too well now when they come to church instead of them receiving so when the man of God comes to church you know this water water is a symbol of the spirit isn't it Yes. so when, them, when they come to the house of God there are two types of group, two groups of people these ones are ready to receive lift it up a bit these ones are ready to receive as the man of God is preaching he is receiving He's receiving. He's receiving. He's receiving. So what is happening? He's getting full of the spirit. Yes. Now this one says, ah, this one, me, I know him. Even this sermon, I know he preached it last year. I mean, I mean, I know him. We, we used to dance together. We used to. So as the man of God is preaching, what is happening? Nothing is entering into him. Why? Because he shut himself to receiving from the man. Forgetting the fact that 
It is not the man he used to know before that this is a new man that God has changed, that God has placed there to help him to get full and to get blessed. So the man is pouring the anointing. Nothing is happening. But now the man is pouring the anointing. This one is receiving. So by the time service is over, by the time they sit in the same church for a long time, this one goes full. And this one still leaves empty. Why? Because their mindset, their perception is too wrong and they become too familiar with the anointing. So they come empty and they go back empty and they go like, oh, there is no anointing there. I mean, there is, I'm not getting blessed. There is nothing wrong with the vessel that was pouring into you. There was everything wrong with the vessel that was receiving the anointing. Are you getting me? Yes, sir. So you can either choose to be the one that want to open up themselves to receive the word or be like this one that says, I'm not ready. Let me just hear this thing because I've heard it before. And you close up yourself and you don't get blessed by the anointing. Are you listening to me? Yes, sir. Thank you. You can have your seats. So you must learn how to open up yourself to receive from an anointing. Are you learning something? Yes, sir. Yes. So that is how you avoid yourself from becoming familiar. Learn how to open up yourself to receive from an anointing. Last point. Let's be upstanding. As I'm closing, let's be upstanding. Once you stand up, I know my time is up, so I have to close. Last point is uh, speak well of the anointing. I will continue possibly next week or the week after. Ask God to give us grace. Amen. Amen. Is speak well. Tell your neighbor, speak well of the anointing. Speak well of the anointing. Say, speak well of the anointing. Speak well of the anointing. The Pharisees said Jesus operated with the spirit of Beelzebub. They said he was a deceiver. They called Jesus all sorts of names. But the same Jesus that they called all sorts of names healed the sick, raised the dead, worked miracles. It's up to how you receive him. You can receive him as a deceiver. You can receive him as any other thing, as a carpenter. The, the people in Nazareth said he's just a carpenter. It's up to how you receive him. But if you perceive him well and receive him well and speak well of him, the anointing shall begin to work for you. Yes. I want you to talk to God this morning. That God should grant you grace and help you to honor the anointing. Just talk to God. Talk to God. Talk to your God. Just talk to God. Just talk to God. Just talk to God. God should help you. Some of you, you need to repent. You said the wrong thing against an anointed. And this honor is coming after you and your household. Premature death is coming for you and your household. But by the mercies of God, you are asking the Lord, Father, may you pardon. May you pardon. May you pardon. May you pardon. Talk to God. 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 Just talk to God. In your own words, talk to Him. Father, we pray that you help us. Teach us to honor, O God. 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 Lebra shona mado shaka, rapa pala kado shala rapa na bashona ne ne meskala ba, 